Good morning. This is a video lecture uh, leading up to, or, or talking about some review uh, topics leading up to a discussion of uh, chapter 7. And uh, so just remember that in earlier chapters, chapter 1 uh, and on, we were introduced to stress analysis. In particular, we learned about stress distribution and cross sections of materials. So in chapter 1, we talked about sigma is equal to P over A. And in chapter 3, we talked about tau is shear stress is equal to TR over I. Then in chapter 4, we talked about shear and moment diagrams, and that led us up to chapter 5, where we talked about sigma in bending is equal to MY over I, and shear stress in bending uh, is equal to VQ over IB. Um, in chapter 2 also, we learned that only axial loads um, are, that when only axial loads are applied, remember, there is a stress distribution on inclined planes. And so even though it's only loaded axially, only pulling in this direction, there are some shear stresses that are developed on an inclined plane. And so we drew a little stress or a little uh, force distribution. And using statics, we found out what P theta and V theta are. And uh, then we found out the normal uh, shear and found out that normal stress and shear stress on that angle are directly related to the actual stresses. However, since stresses are not vectors in the same way as forces, we could not use equilibrium equations to find them. So we had to develop a series of stress transformation equations for axial loads. And those were developed in, equation, or in chapter 2, and they're repeated here. We also found that the sh maximum shear stress uh, is half of the maximum axial stress. And that occurs at a 45 degree angle such that you can see that if you're pulling on this thing and uh, the angle is zero, meaning straight up and down, then all we're talking about is straight axial stress, straight sigma. There is no shear stress on that axis. The same way here, if the, if the angle is at 90 degrees, then pretty much you're taking those two pieces and pulling them straight apart too. So we have all sigma if the angles are uh, 0 or 90 degrees, but if the angle is at 45 degrees, we have the maximum. So what we found is that for all angles, uh, sigma theta on this axis is always going to be less than the sigma in the x direction. So it's generally not going to ever fail in sigma theta. However, if tau max is less than uh, sigma max, then uh, we could have a failure on an angle, uh, another angle due to shear stress. And that's what we discovered with glued joints and finger joint uh, lumber, etc. And uh, so here is an example. Uh, say we have a, a uh, glue joint on a wood beam, and uh, we said, just suggest that uh, by experiment, uh, we've discovered that the shear stress is, is only a quarter of the maximum normal stress. And we're going to glue this thing at 60 degrees and that on that angle right there is 60. So we're going to try to find out whether it's going to fail or not. Using our stress transformation equations we plug those things in and and we discover that um, tau theta or the shear stress at 60 degrees is equal to 0.433 of sigma max. So in this case, 0.433 is greater than the 0.25 that we had determined was our maximum value. So in this case, yes, it will fail in shear before it fails in normal stress. But also we can see as theta increases, it is less likely to fail in shear. So in this case, in this particular example where um, tau max is equal to 0.25 our sigma max, our critical angle is by plugging those things in here, 0.25, and then just solving for the angle of minus 2 theta over 2. And when you solve this thing, you get a minus 15 degrees. Well, minus 15 degrees is the same as positive 75 degrees. So in this case, where uh, shear stress is maximum of 0.25 of uh, normal stress max, then it would fail um, at anything less than uh, a 75 degree angle or a, an angle between 45 and 75. All right, so that leads us up then to chapter three. And in chapter three, we found the stress element to look something like this. When you have a, a rod or some element in pure shear, in pure torsion, you get pure shear. And it tends to make the stress element look like this as you're stressing it on those sides. 
And uh, again, we found that in pure shear, the maximum torsion uh, is going to occur in this direction. However, on some other angle, like say you had some seam or something on your bar or a weak spot on your bar, that uh, we also have um, a normal stress that occurs at some odd angle at that angle or at any angle. So we led up to stress transformation equations in shear, which are repeated here, equation 329. And here, in general, the, the, the shear stress on this angle is always going to be less than the shear due to TR over I, or the twist. So it generally will not ever fail in shear on that angle. However, it could fail on that sigma angle. And uh, if we found that for some, like especially for brittle materials, that the sigma at some angle would could be less than tau, then it could also break uh, due to sigma instead of tau. And we did this um, class demo with uh, with the chalk and found that it broke at a 45 degree angle. And that led us up to chapter six, where we uh, we looked at combined loadings of axial loads and bending loads. And uh, for example, here's a beam under under an axial load as well as a bending load. And um, uh, we we discovered that we can add them or subtract those two stresses depending on whether on the top or the bottom. And um, and then we also said uh, we have even more combinations of uh, of bending and axial loads and torsional loads that we can add together to find out where on any point there is a stress element that can be defined um, and we did some exercises on on that and anyway we after we sum all these forces up in on on that stress element we then recreate the stress element and say uh, at any point on the beam uh, we should be able to define what the stresses are on that point if you recall, we did this one in class, and we talked about the four kinds of stresses, which we just, just mentioned there, and the stress distributions, and we did these two exercises here uh, in class. All right, well, that led us up then to the analysis of uh, looking at maximum stresses um, and uh, trying to analyze um, uh, stresses on uh, different axes. So um, uh, we know that the maximum stresses are often not on the orientation of the given stress element, which we were defining in just those things. So we had to develop a series of stress transformation equations to analyze the stresses at any angle. And we had some sign conventions about uh, stress being, or shear stress being the same magnitude on all four faces. Uh, we had, we analyzed the stress element at a uh, at an angle, and we came up the, with the stress transformation equations given here. And those are equations 7, 4. Then we talked about some special cases, and such that the um, these are the general stress transformation equations uh, given that uh, the stress element would have shear and stress in the x direction and stress in the y direction. However, the special cases are if it's only got stress in the x direction, they reduce to equation 231. In other words, if sigma and y equals zero and tau xy equals zero, then we get the same equations that we had in uh, before. Same if we had uh, sigma x is equal to zero and sigma y is equal to zero, if the only thing we have is shear stresses, they reduce to equation 329, which we had before. And then the last case, uh, special case, would be if there is no shear, but we have both sigma x and sigma y, they reduce to um, equation 7.9. Now, we hadn't actually used this one before in any previous work, so that's what we're uh, going into now in Chapter 7. All right, now we did a couple problems in class, which I'll copy here and put on Blackboard for you. I'm not going to go through these again. Um, then we talked about the principal stresses, how the principal stresses are the minimum and maximum uh, stresses that occur on a particular angle, and we uh, also found some maximum shear stresses. Again, those can occur at some angle from our given angle, or a given, or a main face, whatever you want to call the, the given stress element. So we've defined that sigma uh, 1, actually that should be sigma 1, not x1, but sigma 1 and, and uh, sigma 2, it should be sigma 1 and sigma 2. 
So I'll change those on the notes before I copy those. Uh, those are the maximum stress and the minimum stress, and they occur at, those are the principal angles. The equations for the principal angles um, and the equations for the maximum and minimum stresses are given here in 711 and 717. There's also a, a shear stress that is uh, uh, zero. Oh, oh, so on the principal angle, as the principal angle is defined, there is no shear stress on that angle. And uh, so uh, if we find the principal angle, then we'll get a sigma, and this would be a sigma one and a sigma two, not sigma x one and sigma y one. But sigma one and sigma two, those are the principal stresses, and there are, are and there's no shear on those. All right, then. But we did discuss that there is a, uh, an angle uh, where maximum shear does occur, and that is defined by that formula there. And uh, that uh, the shear, the maximum shear angle, the angle where maximum shear stress occurs is going to be the principal angle plus or minus 45 degrees, and. Uh, and we found out the maximum shear is given by uh, that formula. All right, and then again, we did a couple of examples of that. Here's one that has both sigma x and sigma y and some shear. And uh, we did uh, that problem in class. That led us up to uh, more circle, which we did uh, some exercises on that. And that leads us up to a summary, then, of all the equations that uh, we've been using. So here's a summary of the equations for Chapter 2 and Chapter 3 for stresses on inclined sections. Um, here are the stresses so far in Chapter 7. So these are the uh, uh, stresses at any angle, sigma x1, sigma y1, and tau on that angle and then the principal stresses and um, that we just talked about. And then Mohr's circle, uh, those are the equations to begin Mohr's circle. And I'm not going to talk about Mohr's circle construction in this video. But that leads us then up to where we are right now. And we're going to look at now the stress-strain relationships. Uh, we've talked about stresses only, but now we're going to talk about strain, and that's obviously the deformation. And we're going to look at Hooke's law and the strain relationship uh, equations uh, using the strain transformation equations.